Hey you guys, welcome to Miss Glover's Reading Intervention Video 6. And we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday about our brochure and um, the things that we learned inside of the brochure. Let's keep going. All right, so words that we should know. All right, we should know that a dinosaur is an animal that lived millions of years ago. Exhibit a group of objects shown in one place. Fossil, a part of an animal or a plant preserved as rock. Paleontologist, scientist who study dinosaurs. We should, on other academic vocabulary that we should know. On display, that means that something is shown or exhibited. Related. So things that are connected or linked. Features, parts or details. Opportunity, possibility or chance. Now, let's pick up where we left off yesterday. I'm gonna start reading and it always, uh, and what usually happens on day two is I stop and ask a few more in-depth questions. So, let's go. A brochure is a pamphlet that explains a per, explains or persuades. These excerpts are from a brochure about a museum's special dinosaur exhibit. Dinosaur Days. City Museum of Natural History. Explore our, our all new dinosaur exhibit. Opening day, June 1st. Now, remember, that is the front page of the brochure. That's the first thing that anybody sees when they pick up the brochure. With that in mind, why do you think that the author chose to include the photo of what we have in front of us on the front page of the brochure? Why this photo? Parents, please stop the video to give your kid time to discuss why the author might have, might have chosen this photo. The author might have chosen this photo because it's a dinosaur, but not just any dinosaur, it's a T-Rex. And well, it's a T-Rex head. And many people know about a T-Rex. Many people know what a T-Rex is. So when they first see it, they automatically connect to something that they most likely already know. Let's keep reading. Exhibit Hall, main entrance, Exhibit Hall A, Exhibit Hall B, Exhibit Hall C, Fossil Lab. Have you ever stared at a stegosaurus in the eye or compared your, your footprint to that of a T-Rex? Our new exhibit hall is unlike anything you've ever seen before. View more than 1,100 complete fossil skeletons. Explore paintings and hands-on models that show what these animals looked like when they walked on Earth millions of years ago. That was a long time. Watch scientists at work as they clean and mount new fossil discoveries. Use your computers, use our computers to make dinosaur models move and hear what scientists have to say about these amazing creatures and how they lived. Exhibit Hall A, Gentle Giants. The biggest dinosaurs were sauropods. Sauropods, including the Apartosaurus, were were including the apatosaurus we have on display eight only plants we walked they walked on four legs their necks were long and so were their tails come see for yourself how tall and how long they were exhibit hall b t-rex and family these meat eaters had sharp teeth they walk on two legs. Some use their claws to tear apart their prey. 
discover why scientists believe that this group of dinosaurs, including the mighty T-Rex, are related to eagles and other birds alive today. Exhibit Hall C, amazing horns, armor, and more. Meet Triceratops and the rest of this odd looking crew. Some had horns and bony plates. Some had tails covered with spikes. Scientists are not sure how all of these features were used when these animals were alive. What do you think? You guys, now it's time to stop and I've got a question for you. In the text under Exhibit Hall C, the author describes dinosaurs in this room as an odd looking crew. How is this phrase different from other writing in the brochure? Why might the author choose to use this phrase here? Hmm. Parents, please give your children time to answer this video by pausing the video. I mean, well, to answer the question by pausing the video. Again, I'll say the questions one more time. How is this phrase different from other writing in the brochure? Why might the author choose to use this phrase here? Well, my suggestion is. The author chose to use the phrase odd looking crew because it talks about how all the animals in this room, even though they are triceratops, they didn't all look the same versus when you go to the gentle giants exhibit or the T-Rex and family exhibit, there's some parts that, that I guess are the same. So either they're birds or T-Rex, but not all triceratops look the same. Some have horns, some don't have horns. Some have spikes on their tails, some don't have spikes on their tails. They're just a little bit different. So that's why I think the author called this crew an odd looking crew. Um, and I think the author chose to use this phrase here because to be honest, the picture that I'm looking at of the, the um, triceratops looks a little bit odd. You can see the horn and you can see the plate on its head. You can also see it's a large, this large, I don't know if it's called a snout or its mouth area, but it doesn't look like anything that we've seen before. Let's keep reading. Fossil Lab. Here's an amazing opportunity to see paleontologists at work. These scientists study fossils and prepare them for, our, for new exhibits. They will also answer questions you have about their jobs and about dinosaurs, of course. Based on the photo in this section, Fossil Lab, what can you infer that visitors will see in the fossil lab that is not specifically mentioned in the text. So what will they see? What will people who come to visit the fossil lab, what will they see that's not mentioned in the text? Parents, please pause this video to give your child time to answer. Here, I think that some things that people will see um, are the tools that they use to clean and how many tools that there are. I think they'll see how fossils are packaged when they're being moved because I see some boxes in the back. I think that people will see what a paleontologist workroom just really kind of looks like. I think that just based off of the picture alone, there are just, and I've said this already, but there just are a lot of little tools. And also there are pictures behind the paleontologists. And people will get just a an understanding of what it really means to be a paleontologist in their workspace. Even though you can ask questions. All right, you guys, so we have two more questions. Um... 
that I'm going to ask you before we move on to write about reading. So these last two questions pretty much some they pretty much go with the entire brochure. So that's why they had to be saved until the end. So look at the floor plan and I'll go back so that you can see the floor plan to answer this question. Well, to think about it as I'm asking the question because you're going to need the other side as well. Look at the floor plan on the front of the card. How can you use the floor plan to, um, together with the text that is provided? What does the arrow show? Why is that important information? So again, looking at the floor plan, which this is the floor plan right here. Um, how can what can you how can you use that floor plan to help you with the text the text here what does that arrow show the arrow and why is that important parents please give your child time to answer these questions and pause the video I can use the map to help me find out which room holds which parts of the exhibit. For example, exhibit A, which is on the back of the card, says gentle giants. In the lower left part of the floor plan, the arrow on the floor plan shows the main entrance. That information is important because it tells me how to enter the museum and what I'd like to see. So if you're not interested in Gentle Giants, you don't have to go to Gentle Giants. You can go to um, Exhibit C, where they talk about uh, Triceratops. I've got another question for you. Look at the back of the card. Which text features are grouped together? How many times does this pattern appear? Why was each part included in this pattern? Again, I'll ask those questions again. Look at the back of the card. Which text features are grouped together? How many times does this pattern appear? Why was each part included in the pattern? Please, parents, please pause the video here to give your kids time to answer those questions and please resume the video once they have answered them. Each photo heading and the text direct, directly below that heading are grouped together. I'll say that again. Each photo heading and text directly below that heading are grouped together. The pattern appears four times. Each part was included in the pattern to provide information and details about a certain room in the museum. All right, you guys, we have finished all of our discussion questions. Ah, 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 but we still have to do some right about reading. So, hmm, which room would you want to visit in the museum first? Write a short opinion paragraph and use text evidence to support your ideas. So, which, I, which room would you like to go to and why? Again, use some text evidence to support why you want to go there. Why did that, that room catch your, your attention first? All right, you guys, that's all I have for you. I hope that you enjoy your weekend and I look forward to um, being with you guys next week. Bye.